What we want to do now is apply a similar process to think about the vertical motion. So if you go back up to here, you can see here, this is the differential equation that I've been presented with. And instead of x double dots and x dots, I'm going to get y double dots and y dots, right? So I'm going to, as promised, nudge you in the right direction. Uh, I'm going to say, okay, let's consider the vertical motion. Considering vertical motion. And maybe you're ahead of me at this point, uh, and that's totally fine. Maybe you can catch up for the next bit, or I can catch up for the next bit rather. What I'm gonna do is just write that differential equation first. Y double dot equals uh, minus G minus K Y dot. So that was the second derivative from the left-hand side, and there's that first derivative in there for velocity. I'm gonna put in my values for G and for K, and I think we said gravity was 10, and then I had um, a fifth for K, so that gives me this equation. Now at this moment, when you have a look at this, right, I wonder how many of you are scratching your heads and thinking, okay, what does this lead to, right? What result am I going to get out of this? Um, if I do just a little bit of rearrangement, maybe I'll be able to make it clear to you um, how this, there's a parallel between this situation in vertical motion and the situation we're looking at for horizontal motion. So what I'm going to do is just um, a bit of factorizing here. So if I take out a factor of uh, negative a fifth, uh, what am I going to get here? I'm going to put that uh, y dot out the front because you can see a negative fifth just comes out of that cleanly. Um, the negative is easy to pull out, but if I'm pulling out a fifth as well, then this thing ought to become five times bigger on the inside, so I'm just going to get that. Uh, and just as one final step, which I know may look a little like, why are you doing this, Mr. Wu? Um, I'm going to write this as a difference rather than as a sum, so I'm going to write it like so. Okay, so this is my equation for y double dot, for the vertical acceleration. Now, I want you to look closely at this, and if I zoom out enough, maybe you can see this at the same time as, oh, it's gonna get really small, I apologize for that. Just there, I think you might just be able to make it out, right? I want you to compare, and I'll highlight it for you just to make it super obvious, this differential equ equation here, which I got from y, and I want you to compare it with this differential equation that I got from x. So I'm comparing horizontal and vertical. Now, I want you to tell me if you can, post it in the chat if, you're, if it's coming into your mind, what is the similarity and what is the difference, right? Um, and of course, you know, you can see I've already put in that minus uh, k there is this minus a fifth here. So it's remarkably similar. So I want you to tell me, if you can in the chat, tell me what is the same and what is different. And therefore, what result am I going to get for trying to get out of a differential equation, um, get into something that I can integrate? Any takers? You want to suggest what's similar and uh, what needs to be adjusted? This one's a little less obvious. Any takers, or you know what? I just as likely, in fact, not just as likely. I'd really love if you're confused and you're like, I don't know. I'm not looking. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the comparison. Just please post. Don't know. Like usually, I get to look at your faces and I can see this sort of glazed look or a bit of confusion. But I don't get to see that right now. So do me a favor. Give me some feedback. Tell me like I've got nothing, or here is my idea. That would be really valuable to me actually because it'll change the way I teach the rest of this lesson. Okay. So I've got some suggestions, one from Angad and one from GRU. Um, is it a graph shift is that first question. Um, GRU is suggesting it's also exponential decay, but it's got this extra constant. So this is really promising, right? Um, you can see, and I sort of clued you into the fact that I was writing it in this awkward way with this, um, you know, it's a sum. Why turn an addition into two negatives, right? Um, if you say, for example, were to consider, let's pop it over the side, the side here, the difference between y equals x squared and y equals x minus 2 all squared, right? Um, this is a graph shift, right? The kind that Angad has identified. In this case, it would be a horizontal shift of two units because it's attached to the x, right? Over here, I'm having a shift of negative 50, and I've put that negative 50 in there to indicate the direction, right? Just like here, it's negative, uh, that minus means two units, but it's not going to go to the left, it's going to go to the right. This is going to go uh, not up but, but down. So this is something that we need to uh, need to be considering, right? Now it is, as Gio you said, also exponential decay. You can see essentially um, it's the same thing. Uh, there's an double x double dot and multiplied by a constant x dot, and the same thing down here. Like if I just kind of um, hid this away, let me see if I can do this reasonably. If I just made this disappear, right? Ta-da! Exponential decay, right? So putting that back. 
accounts for this shift. So here's what I'm going to suggest. This is my nudge and then I'm going to give you like, I don't know, maybe five, six minutes. Um, you guys will indicate to me whether you need more time. Okay. What I'm going to say out of this is that I can draw the same conclusion that I had earlier on from an exponential decay point of view, um, that since this is um, going to be an exponential decay situation, I can say it's going to be B e to the negative t on five. I've picked a different letter. I chose a before, so I can't use it again because it might not be the same. Um, and that's going to be shifted. How far is it going to be shifted? Answer, 50 units. And I get that directly from here. Now, some of you are going to look at that and say, Mr. Wu, I do not see that at all. That is not obvious to me. Um, and for those of you who are feeling like that, um, I've actually just earlier today, I made a video to answer that exact question. Like, how can you pull this rabbit out of a hat move if you don't immediately recognize that that is exponential decay with a shift? Um, it's considerably longer. I think it, take, it takes me like 11 or 12 minutes to fully explain it and do it from first principles. You can integrate a few times actually to show it. Um, but I'm going to leave that as something that some of you will be content not to watch because you're like, I, I can see it straight away. Um, and if you want that later, you're welcome to watch it. Um, I've literally got my mouse over the save button on the canvas page where it's going to reveal the link for you, but it's not there yet. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. And like I said, five or six minutes for this, I've gotten you uh, like halfway to getting the, um, vertical displacement equation in terms of time. Uh, we were asked for X as a function of time and uh, Y as a function of time. We've got this one and I've got you halfway there for this. What I'd like you to do is see if you can finish off my working to get Y as a function of time. And then once you have these two parametric equations, these two time equations, what we want to do is eliminate the parameter. Get rid of the T. You're going to have to substitute either the X equation and some of its results into Y or vice versa. I'll let you have a think about which one might be more useful. Um, and once you can eliminate T, you will have done this, uh, determine the Cartesian equation of motion. So, um, if you are able to successfully do that, I'll put this back on screen so you can see we're all on the same starting point here. There's your Y dot. I'm trying to get to a Y equals. All right, so uh, I think I'm going to pick up from there. I'm seeing some answers coming into the chat, which is very promising. So let's see if we can land the plane. Actually, that was a different question. Um, this is about, what is this about? I can't remember. I don't think it's got a plane. Uh, it's just a projectile being fired. Okay, it's trying to get the plane to take off. Um, we are going to pick up from where we had this line here, which was our velocity equation with respect to time. And you can see what I've done is I've used my initial condition t equals zero. Um, I've popped in and, and I've gotten from that initial vector that the, the vertical velocity was 30 at the instant when the projectile was fired. So that gives me, once I evaluate out um, that, that coefficient there of the exponential term is going to be 80. Uh, I pop that back in and now I'm ready to integrate. So just like I integrated x dot with respect to time, I integrate y dot with respect to time, you end up with this and you look at this mess and you think, what is this? It's very strange. Um, but we can actually still work with it because when you put in t equals zero, um, we define the origin as our point where we were firing the projectile from. So if you have a careful look here, right, um, you're going to get uh, zero over here. This term is going to become one, so you get a negative 400. Um, this term is also going to become zero, so you've got the negative 400 and the constant over here. So if you add 400 to both sides, that will give you constant two. And I had to name it separately because of my other constant up above. So there you go. There is my equation, my parametric uh, equation for uh, vertical displacement with respect to time.